Hey guys, how's it going? I just want to let you know that the first half of the podcast is very poor quality and I'm sorry for that. I'm testing out new things and trying new equipment. It really is not working that well. I do not like it, but the second half I fixed. So please enjoy this episode of the podcast. It's going to be a good one. What is up everybody? Welcome back to my podcast. For those of you who don't know, my name is Chadwick Baum, and this, this is my podcast. You're listening to the Chadwick Baum Podcast. Oh, well. All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast. On today's episode, I am here with Snoopy and... My friend Sam Smith. And I gotta say, today's episode is going to be a good one. This episode is the most researched, the most written out. Like, the last episode I did like this was the episode, the podcast episode about my uh, story, my transgender story, and how I came to find my true authentic self. And... This one is more researched than that one, and it is actually regarding transgender issues um, involving one of my local churches in town. And it's not that I'm trying to call them out or anything. I just think there's a lot of inconsistencies with it. Did you did you think there was a lot of inconsistencies with what they were saying? Before we jump into that whole debacle and things I wrote about that. Let's just get into the introduction of this podcast. So I wanted to start off, um, sorry if my audio sounds weird, guys, I have pretty close to my mic. So I want to start off by saying that yes, this is my fellow trans friend, Sam. We met each other at Walmart back when both our lives were kind of crazy. We, I mean, our, I mean, I remember a lot from my Walmart days, but Sam, however, has told me that it's kind of fuzzy here and there. Yeah. Because it was, to be honest, I will say it was not fun for you. Yeah, it was not the best time for me. Yeah, we became really good friends. Uh, um, through Walmart, and that's actually where the um, the Cheeto story was born. Yeah, yeah, the Cheeto. The Cheeto. Now, for those of you that are like, what is the Cheeto story? The Cheeto story is a story where one day there was a bag of Cheetos open while we were stocking the chip and uh, cookie aisle, and I took one of the Cheetos and took a picture of it, and we created this whole fake story about how this Cheeto had slept with both me and Sam and cheated on me and stole Sam's wife and moved away and all this shit. And it's just been an ongoing joke in our friendship ever since. So much so to the point that uh, Sam's wife, Kat, is like, God damn it, is this the fucking Cheeto story again? So much to the point you take pictures of me and you put the cheetah in public when I don't know you're taking pictures of me. <laughs> yes, I've taken pictures of Sam and put the cheetah behind him and I'm like, you're being bullied. <laughs> and, and then Sam <laughs> will reply back and be like, I guess I wasn't salted today and I didn't even know it. <laughs> or last night I sent him a picture with the cheetah flipping him off because we were having a little fun argument as a joke, and I said, I called in reinforcements, bitch, and so I sent him a picture of the Cheeto flipping them off. We have a uh, pretty fun time with that. We have these inside jokes that uh, Sam's wife, Kat, is just like, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? The whole Nana thing, like, Nana! (laughs) And the Nana thing is just, we were literally uh, at the thrift store one day, thrift shopping, and I saw this, like, old lady dress, and I was like, oh, that's perfect. I create this new character called Nana. 
and just come over to your house as Nana and see what your wife thinks. <laughs> you know, the flatter cookies. Nana made some cookies. <laughs> Be careful, careful, sweetie. Don't, don't eat the left side. side. Those, Those are the special cookies. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so we just had a lot of fun. The actual first funny story I want to talk about was the time I tried to fucking outsmoke you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought I was all tough shit when I worked at Walmart because I just started smoking weed when I worked out at Walmart. And the first time went great, so I was all cocky and shit and thought, you know what? Perfect. This is great. I can do this. And so, so I knew Sam, Sam smoked weed, weed. so one, one night he invited me over to smoke weed with him, and I, I thought, you know what, fuck, I could outsmoke this guy. He didn't know it was a competition. He, he, yeah, he didn't know it was a competition, <laughs> but I was trying to keep up with him, and either keep up with him or outsmoke him, and it was a big mistake for, like, one of my first times because I could not handle it and yeah, I, I was freaking out well i was pretty surprised because i got pretty stoned i was like well shit and then i noticed you were freaking out and i was like oh no <laughs> yeah i was having that freak out moment and <laughs> sam i'm sure sam was over there like fuck i am too high to deal with this <laughs> like i'm too high to deal with this like what the fuck god damn it like, I'm not supposed to be the trip babysitter right now. <laughs> and I'm just freaking out, like, cussing him out. And Sam's just like, okay, man. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and I think I finally ended up walking home after I finally felt better. And I was with one of my exes at the time. And she, I walked in the door and she's like, where have you been? And I was like, nowhere. <laughs> and she's like, you're high, aren't you? And I was like, no. She was so pissed. Yeah, she was mad. Because I had been out smoking all night instead of... Uh, probably reeked when you got Oh, yeah, and I didn't even tell her where I was. I just fucking went and hung out with Sam. Didn't even tell her when I was coming home or whatnot. So it was fucking... It was a good night, but also almost a bad night for me. Because I was like, I don't know if... I'm going to die or not. But I took care of you. Right. Like other people who just oh, yeah. sent you home to deal right. with that. Now, now you weren't a part of this story, but you were. I know about it. But you, <laughs> yeah, but you know about this story. This story is also involving my Walmart time when I first started experimenting with weed. After the first time I smoked weed, perfectly fine. You know, it did great. Uh, thought. Wow, this is great. I'm on cloud nine. This is lovely. So I got brave enough to try my first edible. And nobody told me jack shit about edibles. Nobody told me you're supposed to only eat half the first time or even a quarter just to see how it affects you. And then if it doesn't affect you that much, then you can eat more and go from there. But no, I didn't want to be rude. So I decided to eat the whole pot cookie just because... I didn't want to be rude, you know, and after eating the whole cookie, I felt, you know, fine. I was like, I feel great. And my buddy, my coworker at the time was like, hey, you want me to take you home? And I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm feeling great, dude. This feels awesome. And like he had bought pizza and everything. It was like a good time. Well, he takes me home. So I'm like, cool, fine. And so I'm sitting on my bed, you know, watching Law and Order having a good time, you know, and all of a sudden my TV screen goes from clear back here to way up to my face, like right in front of me, and I'm like, oh shit, this is not good, something's about to happen here, and so I get up off the bed, and I'm like, oh my god, where's my fucking feet, I have a roommate at this time, come out of my bedroom in our apartment, and I'm like, dude, I have no legs, you gotta help me, and he's like, you have legs, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, no, I don't have legs because I'm floating and I don't want to be floating anymore and you're not helping me. And so he's like, well, what do you want me to do? And I was like, you got to call somebody. Somebody had suggested on the phone, like, just go drink some milk and then you'll be fine. I literally, when I tell you, I literally ran into the kitchen, grabbed the milk jug and started fucking chugging it. I was like, I, I was chugging it and like spilling it everywhere. I was like, fuck this shit. Yeah, I gave you a little bit of a cup of milk whenever you got too stoned with me. Right. And, and then, then somebody, somebody said, uh, 
And then somebody's like, well, just go lay down, and then eventually you'll fall asleep, and you'll wake up, and you'll feel great. And I was like, okay, fine, okay, whatever. And, like, so I, like, I laid in my bed, and I was, like, looking up at my ceiling. All of a sudden, my fucking light looks like it's got a face on it, and it looks like it's laughing at me, and I'm just screaming at my life, stop mocking me! Uh, right. I'm sure it was, because he wasn't stoned and I was. I'm sure he's thinking that this is what stoned feels like. I don't want to do this shit. Finally, I fall asleep. I wake up the next day. I feel better, but I still feel like I'm fucking out of it. I still feel partially stoned, but like I can function. So I show up to work and I'm like, fuck. I hope nobody notices that I'm still a little bit high. <laughs> I just went through my work day, but that was a bad experience for me. Like, I was like thinking, I don't want to be this high ever again. Quit smoking weed after that for a while. I was like, I'm done with weed if that's how it's going to feel every time I do it. I had like some freaking almost like PTSD from weed. I was like, no, I'm not doing this shit ever again. Like, that's fucking terrible. Now, I've since decided to stop doing edibles. Like, I haven't had edible in a while. And I'm sure if I did the edible like more properly this time, I mean, I'm sure it would go different. Can you buy like edibles from dispensaries? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. We have all the edibles. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I should definitely do that next time. Like, maybe try like gummies or something. Oh, yeah, they've got like sour gummies. And right. Whatever. Non sour gummies. Yeah, if I could do it that way, that'd probably be better. And I'm more of like, I discovered I'm more of like a sativa mm -hmm. person because I like to still function. Yeah, me too. Well, I. Me too. I don't like to have the shit that just puts me in the couch. Oh, yeah, no. I get couch lock bad. Right. Like, I only like indica if I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it does do that because I, I smoked a shit ton of indica before. I've been like, you know what? I could go take a fat nap right now. Yeah. <laughs> and there was one, one day I got so stoned. Uh, like, this is like a couple months ago. I got so stoned that I was eating so much because of how high I was that I ended up throwing up from the amount of food I ate. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is bad. I've never thrown up, but I've been like so fucking full. Like, oh yeah. My stomach hurt. I was like, uh, I, I, was just, like, I was like, I gotta stop smoking this much. Like, fuck. I was like, this fucked me up. And plus that day I had also smoked when I was half asleep. Oh yeah. So it really fucking was getting to me. And I was like, holy shit. And I was like, this is not good. Uh, the fun part is going on a diet while also smoking weed. Oh, that's like um, when I was on my diet really heavily, I quit drinking while I was on my diet. And then there was like one day, a couple of friends invited me out. And I was like, sure, you know what? And I was like, I immediately tried to go back to the same exact amount that I used to drink. But I was heavy. Yeah. And... That was the biggest fucking mistake ever well, because your body weight plays into like how the alcohol yeah and works. like I had tried to, like I drank the exact amount I used to drink and dude I was way more fucked up than yeah, usual. I was like holy shit I was like I gotta tone it back and I'm gonna drink again but now since having my gallbladder issues I can't drink anymore so and I'm trying to stay sober now so that helps me out yeah those days were fun when I used to drink and smoke weed all the time. Now I smoke weed like maybe like three times a month at yeah. most. Like I try to really save my weed. Like, it's getting expensive. I know. Yeah. So I try to like smoke as little as I can. I mean like if you know like game nights and stuff. Like sometimes I'll pull out my weed and I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to smoke. Everybody else is smoking. Like let's have a good time. Yeah. And I had somebody tell me recently that I told them I quit drinking but that I started smoking. And they tried to tell me that weed is worse than drinking. I mean, either way, it's bad for you. So right. I'm like, I mean, yes, weed can cause, cause like... It's your lungs, alcohol hurts your liver. Right. And can cause you, like, heart issues. With, like, so can alcohol. Right. And it's like, it, if you think about it, anything's bad. Right. Like, I mean, even carrots are bad if I stab myself hard enough. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I mean... Anything's bad, just the way you look at it, but, like, there's also major benefits, though, behind marijuana, though. I mean, it is bad, but I've heard stories where it's uh, helped people with cancer. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've got cancer, they want you to take, like, three different nausea meds and, like, all this other shit when you could just fucking smoke weed. Yeah, weed helps a lot of things. I have noticed good things more than it does bad things. I mean, some people, it completely... Uh, 
messes up and just makes them lazy all the time, but it just depends on what you're smoking. Yep, yeah. and your personality too. Oh yeah, and some people can handle different types of weed more than uh, um, yeah, some people can handle uh, different uh, strengths than others. Mm-hmm. It just depends on you know how much you smoked and how much you haven't. Yeah. Cause I've noticed that if I go like a couple months without smoking, once I smoke again, I'm only able to smoke like half a joint because yeah. your tolerance is down. Yeah, yeah. A full time <laughs> like fuck me up. I'm like, okay, I need to tone it back a bit. You know? But once I start building up that tolerance again, then I can do more but I only usually do like one joint or unless I'm like really trying to party it up like I'll do two like when I was in Boise uh, last year for my sister's birthday I smoked two joints because I was fucked up on alcohol and I was like you know what let's party and so I smoked two joints on top of drinking and I was really faded yeah I was like I was like in this loud ass bar, like to the point where I was gonna start tweaking out, and then I had to like center myself back to reality, and be like, nope, we're in a party situation. You're fine. You guys smoked weed at a bar? No, no I, I smoked it before. Okay, going to this I was bar. about to be like, it's illegal. <laughs> I know it's illegal, <laughs> there, but um, I was <laughs> smoking it out in public, and my sister goes, oh my god, yeah, because she lives there, <laughs> and she goes, do you realize that's illegal? And I was like. Does it look like I give a fuck? <laughs> I literally looked at her and said, I was like, does it look like I give a fuck? I wouldn't be lighting it up if I was afraid. I've heard that people who are Oregon citizens just get like kicked out of Idaho and just sent, they're like, go back to Oregon before we arrest you. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's like, oh my God. But yeah, I definitely wouldn't want to be caught with it. Like, no, you don't want to be detained in no, I don't want to be detained in Idaho. It's a fucking red state. Like, why would I want to do that? Like, that's the worst state for me. And I do not like this bullshit that they're trying to do with the combining Oregon well, fuck that. and Idaho. Yeah. It's like... Even the state line. Right. It's like, that just really makes me want to move to Portland then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's so funny that half of the conservatives here are like, we don't want that shit either. Yeah. And it's like, you would think they would because it's a red... No. State, no, but they're like, we don't want that. We don't want to be part of Idaho. It's just the fucking dumbasses. And I think that the reason that they don't want it is because we would get the taxes and shit, and yeah. we don't fucking want that nonsense. Well, and some of them, they they're weed smokers too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they don't want, they don't definitely don't want the whole uh, shit with like. We would be like the ghetto part. Of Oh, we would be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever been to that, <laughs> like, ever been to that corner of Idaho? When, when you roll through there, roll your windows up. Yeah, <laughs> roll your windows Lock up. Lock your doors. Lock your doors. <laughs> like, why is there riots there? No, there's just really strange tweakers and rednecks. Yeah. What are we known for? Rednecks, tweakers, and our church is not listening to the fucking COVID mandates. Well, the, you know, they would get along in Idaho more than here, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel like like there's a lot we could benefit from here, here, like better restaurants. The thing that we need is we need like a home style buffet because we have no buffets here. It could be like, I don't know, like, because in Missouri we've got the Golden Corral. Yeah, yeah, Golden Corral. Yeah, that is my shit. I will fuck that up. (laughs) Right. So, we need to get that shit here instead of this Panda Express fucking Arby's. Oh, yeah, the Arby's. Yeah. I got the Wagyu burger double patty and yeah. I expected it to be like the shit. It was overdone dry. Right. right. And yeah, yeah, I expected, you know, because I went to Arby's in the past, like, and I thought, Arby's is fucking good. Like, why don't we have this? And when it came here, I was just disappointed. Yeah. But it, but like somebody told me the other day, it depends on where it is. Like, if you got a certain cook that cooks it a certain way, like, that would be like, Say, for instance, like me going over to Pendleton, if I went to the Denny's over there, oh, yeah. if I was like, this Denny's is shit. Like, it's not Denny's itself, it just depends on where it is and who's cooking it. I actually like Pendleton's Denny's better than ours. Oh, you do? Yeah. I've never actually been to it. So. They, um, they get menu updates sooner than we do. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow, I'll have to try it one of those days. I know that because Caleb used to work it there. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah, we, we could, could benefit, benefit from, from a fucking buffet, like, 
not a Chinese buffet. Right. right. No. Every time you say buffet, people are like, oh, Chinese buffet. Yeah. We no. got too much fucking right. Chinese food. The only thing I loved from the Chinese buffet when it was here was the soft served ice cream. Oh, really? They had a soft served ice cream, and I was like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. All the ice cream I want. Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah. They're like, sir, don't you want any? Nope. Nope, just here for the dessert. I liked right. that barbecue chicken on a stick. Ooh. That was the best, and you can't get that. Anymore. Right. And when they, I will say I did like the Chinese buffet when they moved away from doing a buffet and turned it into an actual restaurant. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you ate there when it was like the actual restaurant. Yeah. 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 I actually uh, went there with Drew oh. from Cap 2. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah when, when I, I ate there, they had the best orange chicken when they turned it into a restaurant. Yeah, we definitely need something better than a Chinese buffet. It needs to be like soul food. Yeah. Because like, everything uh, we have here is fast food that kills your soul. Yeah, like, like in Tri-Cities, they have a place called uh, uh, Grandma's Buffet. Oh, yeah. And it is great. It's got all sorts of, like, different types of food. Or even something like a sizzler. Oh, yeah. A sizzler would be good, too. Right. Yeah, my dad said... Has said we need an Applebee's. I love I'm over Applebee's. Right. And he's like, we need some something like Applebee's. Or Olive Garden. Yes. <laughs> I said we need an Olive yeah. Garden too. Because like, if we had like an Applebee's, that would be great for like after the late night after the football games yeah. and the sporting events, like for everybody to go to. Like, yeah. Just, well, something that's got a bar. Right. You know, something that's open late night or even 24 hours. Like, cause Denny's used to be 24 hours until COVID hit. They're moving back to that. Yeah, I saw that. I, I, right. So, they, so, so far, they've been doing it uh, Fridays and Saturdays. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll go back to it all together once we get... That works out for me because sometimes, like, when the school puts on, like, stuff, like, you know, and we're there until, like, 9, 10 o'clock oh, yeah. at night. Like, I was there until, like, 10 o'clock at night just cleaning up after the carnival. And I went to Denny's, and I was like, ah, they're going to close soon, you know? But having a 24-hour place is good because if you're a late worker like me, like, sometimes when you get done with work, you're like, oh, shit, nothing's open. It was always great to have Denny's because I could be like, oh, fuck, I'm just going to run to Denny's and go get something. We should probably talk about what this podcast is actually about. But I wanted to talk about the whole freaking Bud Light thing. Yeah, that commercial. Yeah, that yeah. commercial and everybody all offended. Well, like, I didn't even see the commercial. And then I saw the crap on Facebook where people were like, I'm done drinking Bud Light. And I was like, right. oh, well, it must be pretty bad. You know, like, it must be offensive. And I got on and I was, like, watching it. It was just, it was kind of funny to me. Honestly. Yeah, it was right. And it's like... It, it made me laugh how many people were like, you know what, I always knew I should have stuck with this beer or whatever. And then there was a video of a guy explaining how pretty much all the beers have supported the LGBTQ. Yeah, at some point, yeah. And it's just like, oh, looks like you're going to have to be sober now. <laughs> you know what? When they released, did you see that after they released that one, they also released, like, one that for, like, the conservatives? Yeah. It was so basic. It literally looked like AI produced it. Oh, I know. It was so... It was just, just like, I think that since their sales just, like, started dropping, the, and they are just marketing meeting, they were just like, we got to put something out now. Land of the free. And yeah. there's a horse, like, right? Oh, I know. That's every beer commercial. Yeah, it's ever. like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, we got to... We gotta do something right now that screams America. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like red, white, and blue, fucking go all out on it. Like, I don't give a shit. Just put something out. The fucking CEOs are like, perfect, that's great. Like, spend five minutes on it. Yeah, it's not perfect. And it's like, I don't see what the big deal is with having a, like, like me personally, I don't care who your spokesman is. Like, I'm still gonna fucking. Drink your product, right? Like just because you like it. Why are you gonna stop drinking your product just because of a certain? Uh, like I understand if it was like offensive, because right. I at first I was like, oh no, what what did they do in this commercial that's so offensive? Right. But it wasn't even offensive. That would be like KFC marketing their chicken specifically to people of color. Yeah. Then if something if an ad like that ever came out, I'd be like, okay, maybe. Or if they did like this whole like reel of just their abused chickens, and they were like, oh yeah, they're yeah. fat, and this is why they're so delicious. Right. <laughs> so we're pumping 
pumping them full of hormones and shit. Yeah, they're tiny cages. Yeah. <laughs> no, I did like that commercial. Now, I will be honest, I never saw the commercial. The Bud the Bud Light commercial? No, I just saw all the, I just read all the articles and stuff that was released from the news sites I follow. You should watch it. It is, a, it's, I liked it. Okay. Yeah. I'll definitely have to check it out. And another thing I think that, um, I think this happened after it that I want to talk about is the goddamn whole Target situation. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, what they do? With uh, <coughs> Target had a bunch of Pride merch. And people got like angry about it to the point where Target's like, okay, well, we're just going to remove this then. Oh, yeah. So they just removed it, and they, not to the point where there was no, they just toned it down. And I think Target was one of the first stores that was like, selling binders too i don't see why you have to make a big deal just because it's in a store like like if it's not for you right like why make a big deal out of it it's not for you i I get how they feel like it's in their face but at the same time like how about just either avoid that section or don't shop at that store right well i mean just it existing is in their face right and it's so it's so weird how they think like oh like uh they're just putting it in our faces, like, yeah. we're not. We're just trying to make ourselves aware, actually. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's kind of funny, though, because, like, you know, when before I passed, you know, mm-hmm. uh, people would be like, oh, you're just, like, flaunting your gayness. Oh, God. Me and Kat. And now that I, you know, I passed, and we seem like we're just, like, I'm a cis male and we're a straight couple, you know, all of those people that were like that, they're just like, oh, you guys are so cute, and blah, blah, blah. Right. You know, like, yeah. yeah. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's, it's so weird, because, yeah, like, nowadays, like, even me personally, I'll, I'll be honest, I see you guys as, like, this happy couple, and I'm sure back in the day, people saw it as, like, this monstrosity, yeah. like, what the hell are you guys doing? Like, that's wrong. Yeah. And it's like, that's why I get so weirded out with like partners I'm with mm-hmm. if they're trans and they don't pass. It's like I'm not hating them because they don't well, pass. You feel, you feel nervous for them because yeah. it, you know it can be dangerous and it can be emotionally damaging. And, and then it also makes me feel weird personally because I'm getting stares as well. Well, because like, they're gonna judge you as a whole, right? If you're together. Yeah, and it's like, like especially with my last partner, I was like. Uh, I was like, I kept getting all these stares, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do here? Like, like I, I don't feel like it's my place to really say anything because it's not my transition, and yeah. it's not, it's not my job to always stand up for. Um, but you know, unfortunately, living in the area we live in, that's something you deal with when you're transitioning. Oh yeah, all the fucking stare. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I'm planning on moving, mm-hmm. which. I haven't told the podcast yet or mentioned this to the universe yet, but um, I am planning on moving from here to Portland, Oregon, where it's more accepting, obviously. I just have to be cautious of what area I move to because I don't want to be in a place where there's a lot of homelessness, Yeah. which I mean, it's pretty... The homelessness is crazy. You're just basically going to have to not live anywhere near downtown. Yeah, the homeless. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm definitely staying away f- from downtown. My aunt, who lives down there, has given me suggestions on where to move, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna move to that area because there's hardly any homelessness. I mean, you'll see them like here. You'll see them like every once in a while, but uh, not all the time like you would in downtown Portland. So it's gonna be a very accepting place for me to live. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cat's family's trying to get us to move up near Portland, but not in Portland, like on one of the towns surrounding it. So right. I don't know what we're going to do. We're buying a house, though. Well, that's good. Whether it kills us or not. Right. <laughs> well, that's good. You guys need a house, because, I mean, because yeah. you got the dog and you yeah. got your cats. You just need a bigger space for everybody to really... Well, and I'd like... I know it's probably not, you know, it's not feasible now, but I'd like to get at least three bedrooms, you know, because yeah. I'm going to be trying to work from home, and then I've got people from Missouri that I want to come up and, you know, like, experience Oregon, because yeah. they've never left Missouri. Right. And, you know, I, the reason I'm making this big leap to move is because I don't want to be that person that dies in my hometown, like, uh, yeah. 
I want to at least say I moved somewhere and you know if it doesn't work out then yeah sure I'll move back here but like I want to at least say that I left this town yeah. at least once yeah and went and tried to at least start a life I mean I know if I end up meeting someone in the future and having kids in the future I eventually would probably move back here so my parents could see their grandkids mm -hmm. and be around them but I want to uh, move to where it's more accepting yeah. and it's easier to get to these appointments that I'm doing down there yeah I, I thought about Washington is like an option for us because all my appointments are in Washington right that's yeah that's a good little place yeah and I mean, you Walla still Walla wouldn't be too bad to live in. No. Tri Cities. No, Walla Walla and Tri Cities are both great Spokane places. Spokane would be good too. Yeah, yeah, I love Walla Walla as a whole. It's just oh, beautiful. And they have Applebee's. Yeah. <laughs> and there is lots of vineyards mm -hmm. and distilleries yep. down there, so that you have lots of options for ciders, buddy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the only thing, thing they don't, don't have is side A, my friend. Oh, yeah, I know. I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> right. I don't know though. Like I'm starting to get to the point where their their menu is so limited. I'm right. like, kind of tired of their menu, <laughs> but I'm just hooked on their homemade side. Right. Just just call them like, hey, do you guys like? Would you like ship if I paid you this right. amount of money? Would you ship me your homebrews? Right. It's like just do all of them. Yeah. Last time I was in there, I was telling one of the guys, I was like, you guys need to see if your brewmaster will do a brew class for like people outside that aren't working for Side A. But he right. was like, yeah, I don't know about that, but they're opening up a brew, an actual brewery. Did you know about that? Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's going to be in a different building altogether. Oh, like Side A is? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. So, yeah. Dude, that would be awesome. I guess they'll do tours and shit. Ooh. So. Nice. Apparently, but. Yeah. Right. We'll see. Yeah, you imagine if Side A got big enough to the point to where it was in like grocery stores and stuff? That would be so cool. Like if you just go and like, buy like... Part of me just wanted to try to go get a bartending job there just so that I could learn from their experience. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I'm not, I don't even need them. You're just like taking notes like, can you show me how to... Okay, exactly how much do you add? Like, I'm not going to apprentice with you guys or do anything for free. Like you definitely have to pay me, but I'm just there to learn. I'm right. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. <laughs> like I'm not gonna wait tables or anything and I can't right. buy good customer service anymore, but <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's that's funny. That that would be the difficult part is like no side A if you moved. You'd have to come back and visit just for side A. That's okay though. I did find um a cider brand that I like almost as much. Oh so. okay. Yeah, luckily for me, when I did drink, I drink I drink Bud Light, so that's pretty much everywhere. So yeah. I, have, uh, I would never have a problem with no, that. No, yeah, I become a snob. Like when I go to Denny's, I'm like, "What brands do you have?" And they're like, "You mean flavors?" And I'm like, "No, what brand? What brand, what brand is this?" Because I will not drink like whole specific brands. Like if you've got Angry Orchard or that Ace brand, that's a no go. Or you don't like Ace? No, it's terrible. It's just oh. like juice. Oh, gives me a headache. My uh, my brother really loves that Ace stuff. It's like three percent alcohol. Oh, right. That's what I drink is like eight point five. Yeah, and uh, you, you know, know what I don't, don't like? like. You, you might, might like this because you're into like you you like your coffee like super dark and yeah, stuff. That's what I'm drinking is black coffee. Like I do not like that um, Irish Death. Oh yeah. Um, I don't know if you've ever tried that, but... I haven't tried that one yet. I tried uh, the Rogue. Oh, the Rogue. And that was dark. It was definitely dark. Um, but, you know, beer is different than cider because, you know... I don't know. I like ales. I like pale ales and yeah. stuff like that when it comes to beer. Not dark beers. Right. But, yeah, because I tried a coffee stout from Side A. And yeah. that, it wasn't my cup of tea. I guess... Uh, Pabst Blue Ribbon makes a coffee uh, style PBR beer. PBR is fucking disgusting. That, that's, that's a total redneck beer right yeah. there. You are... I can't even... Right. Man. If you, if you, really, <laughs> if you really want to piss <laughs> off the rednecks, do a trans PBR commercial. Yeah. <laughs> like, God damn it. We have one thing left in this world. They took it from us. Yeah. 
I remember the first time I went to Side A with you guys, felt like such a new because they're like, what can I get you to drink? And I was like, oh, I'll take a Bud Light. And I'm like, we don't have a Bud Light. Yeah, we we don't, have, but we have a beer that's like Bud Light. We don't like any of that pussy shit. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll take the beer that you have that's like Bud Light. I tried it, and it was not my favorite. They're like, we only have beer on tap. Right. We don't have any of that shit. <laughs> and I was like, our beers are six dollars a pint. <laughs> yeah, and, and we, we have burgers without sides. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, they have sides. I know they have sides. That meme is just funny. No, the place that doesn't come with sides is that um, restaurant at the um, grocery store, that family market. Oh yeah, they don't come with sides. That pisses me off. You have to pay like four or five bucks just for a side of fries. Yeah, yeah you get like a sandwich, and they'll give you fries. And it's like the fuck. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so I usually order fries anyway, but like, but I'll tell you what, their fries are good there. I didn't like their fries that much because they fucking, they put so much mayonnaise um, on them. It's like, and it's not even mayonnaise, it's mayo. Oh, yeah. So they have this uh, garlic fry there that they put like Alfredo sauce and cheese on. Oh, I didn't try that one. That's so good. It like... I, I mean, I can't, I can't have it now. It's in my gallbladder, but yeah. God, it's so good. I probably didn't get it because of the garlic, because uh, people overdo garlic, and it gives me heartburn. Ooh, so, yeah. And then you get garlic breath, and it's just fun. So, right. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody wants to kiss somebody with garlic breath. No. I'm, I'm sure, sure your wife is like, no, sorry. Probably. That's, That's like, like uh, what was that I used to eat? The... There's something I used to eat that my ex would be like, no, I'm not, like, kissing you until you go brush your teeth. Like, if I eat any kind of, like, crab or anything, mm. cat wall, and on the other side, you know, cat's got these onion chips. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, you gotta go brush your teeth before you kiss me when you're eating these onion chips. <laughs> now, here's a weird, stupid question that I want to ask before I move on. Um, somebody's allergic to something, and you're not. That you eat it and then you kiss that person. Like it depends on how allergic they are. Right? Can can they like get it from like you kissing them? It depends on how allergic because Caleb is allergic to fish, Mm -hmm. and his girlfriend went ate fish and kissed him, and he went into anaphylaxis. Oh shit! Yeah. So and he's like he's bad allergic to fish. Wow. Like even if it's like. Like, he got an anaphylactic shot from fucking Taco Bell because they had the fish fillet or whatever, sub, or whatever restaurant had the fish fillet, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, they cross-contaminated his food with that. I'm sure they just didn't, like, clean their grill off. But oh, it's yeah. posted there, too, that it's, you know, cross-contaminated. Yeah. And that sent it to the hospital. Right, and um, <clears throat> what was it? Uh, my old manager, when I worked at Bo Jackson's, he used to tell us, like, very specifically, that if someone requested that they couldn't eat a certain food they were allergic to it, that we had to switch the pan that we were using. Like, we had to use a completely brand new pan so there was no cross-contamination. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's crazy to think that that happens because, you know, you're sitting there cooking, you would think, like, Oh, it's going to cook off all the other shit, but no, it doesn't. No, it does not. <laughs> it, it's like, damn. And it's like, what really makes me feel bad is people that are like gluten intolerant mm-hmm. and can't have that stuff. And they're like, it's like, it's everywhere. Yeah, it's like, how do you even eat? Yeah. Like, when you go out to a restaurant, it's like, I'll just have water. Salad, no croutons. Right, no croutons. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, because, because yeah, yeah, gluten's in almost fucking like everything right now. And I can't imagine someone being like allergic to a lot of different things because then how do you really eat? It's like, let's take the lettuce, please. Yeah. <laughs> just the lettuce. I'll just pay $15 for lettuce, I guess. I guess. I'd be pissed. I'd be like, this right. is not even a salad. Right, it's not even a salad. <laughs> and $3 worth of lettuce. And that's kind of the reason I didn't get my uh, gallbladder removed, because that's basically what they were telling me it was going to be like. It's like, yeah. you got to fucking watch what you're eating. Oh, yeah, that's what I was like, it, you will like regret now, because my sister got her gallbladder taken. Yeah, it's like, I do not want to have to watch what I eat. I said, I mean, yeah, now I'll watch what that I eat. That closely, though. Right. And it's like, but now, if I watch what I eat, I still have that option to where I can eat certain things if I have to. 
but I said I don't want to risk it with having a gallbladder out because yeah. I don't want shit to get really fucked up. Right. Yeah. And it's like this is just uh, me. Uh, I just told him like, hey, I'm just gonna watch what I. Um, I'm just gonna watch what I eat, uh, and not worry about it, uh, as normal, rather than having my gallbladder out. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm not gonna put up with that shit. Yeah, because if you're not already so far gone, you know, with the gallbladder, oh, yeah. you can nurse it back. Yeah, yeah like, I knew somebody that they told me that they said they needed them to get their gallbladder removed, and they're like, oh, no, it's fine. They're like, I'll just come back and have it done when you schedule it and they're like no 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 like we're clearing the surgery list like, like you have to have it removed some right people, now some people yeah it's that bad yeah, yeah. and it's, it's like oh shit I'm glad mine isn't that bad hey guys ready to take your love for all thanks Chadwick Bomb to the next level well check out my incredible merch collection whether you're a seasoned vlog watcher or maybe you're just a dedicated podcast listener I have merch for everybody. I have Chadwick Bomb Vlogs merch. I have Chadwick Bomb Podcast merch. You can get everything from t-shirts to pillows to coffee mugs, even stickers. So go there today and get your Chadwick Bomb Vlog merch. You are not going to want to miss it. Never mind. <laughs> so that's funny. And walked away as soon as I got it unlocked, too. Oh my god, yeah. Never you were mind. there. <laughs> and then you were like, how come I'm always the time person out here? Because they see my watch, I noticed. Oh, that, hey, yeah. Because yeah. it's bright pink watch. Right, yeah, bright pink. It's kind of <laughs> hard to hide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, I need to go out there again one of these days. I do, too. I actually was so surprised because, like, the school district does appreciation week for, oh. like, different employees. They gave us gift cards to Hot Lake for a soaking oh. pass. So, yeah. We should go out there and one I of these days. I haven't used mine yet. I need to, yeah. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, we gotta plan that. It's so hot now, though. I know that's a, you gotta catch it like early in the morning. Yeah, because it's starting to cool down early in the morning. Yeah. So we're gonna have to plan that for one of Cat's days off, so we can all go out yes. early in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, because because by the time people. yeah, because by the time the afternoon would hit, it'd be way too hot for yeah. it. Yeah. Like that, I can't understand how people do. I know. I was just thinking about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, we're totally going to go do this. And I was like, oh, I would, like, die because of my heart condition and, like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I got to charge up my Fitbit so I can take it with me because it tracks my heart. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. Because, like, last time, like, I didn't even realize, but one of the last times I went alone, because mm -hmm. I got all brave and I went alone a couple times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I stayed in there for, like, nine hours. Oh, shit. But I was, like tracking my heartbeat because I had to like pop myself up out of the water anytime my heart like got too fast yeah <clears throat> crazy mm -hmm. wild almost <laughs> kill yourself there buddy yeah well and it, like I didn't know like I've been eating a lot of green vegetables that's oh yeah that's not good because my blood's so thick because oh. they thicken your blood more so I thought I was being healthy oh when Jesus. I'm pushing myself to almost have a heart attack or a stroke or a blood clot Right. So when are they going to do that procedure? Um, I have to... I'm going to my doctor on the 3rd, and I have to get a referral to our hematology clinic. And oh, then okay. They'll, they'll start, like, taking my blood regularly. Because just donating blood twice a year wasn't cutting it. Oh, so it'll be like a... So will it be like a monthly thing, or...? I don't know. It depends on what that doctor says. Oh, okay. But, yeah, so it's going to be... Yeah, I have no idea. I just thought when you told me this, I thought it was going to be one huge session where they're like, okay. Oh, they just drain you. Okay. Of blood blood. No. Okay. It, yeah, it's just periodic. I was like, that sounds dangerous. They have to take more than what, like, doning blood right. mm -hmm. is allowed to take, so it has to be in a hospital. So if, if that was me in your position, I would literally tell them, let me put my AirPods in and let me blindfold myself so I don't have to watch this because yeah. that will gross me the fuck out. Are you one of those people that pass out? No, I don't pass out, but I just don't like looking at it. Uh, yeah, I don't care about it. I don't. I mean, like, okay, like, I will say, like, if in a, in a medical emergency, I could probably be like, oh, shit, like, what do I need to do? Like, yeah. hold it. But, like, 
Just in general, I don't like it. You're going to have to get used to little sticks and pokes, though, because they have to monitor your hormones. I know. Because I have fuck. to get... That's I have to suck. get stuck once every six months. Damn, that's gonna suck. <laughs> yeah, that. Well, and then on top of that, you know, my my hormones are shots. So oh, like, yeah. I have to stick myself at right. home, and then I have to give blood. Yeah. So. And I'm thinking of doing the uh, pill form. I figured as much. And that's the least invasive. Yeah, and besides, because I don't trust doing it myself. Yeah. And I don't really have anybody here to. Do they give you to... the sh- option to do a shot? Um, well, I haven't had the appointment yet oh, for okay. endocrinology, so yeah. I'm going to wait and see what they say, because yeah. they're going to review my labs that I just had done, uh-huh. and which is weird. They wanted me to, like, bring all that shit, and it's like, well, can't you just call my doctor they should and request be able it? to access it. That's weird. Yeah, like, I mean, it's in my... I mean, you can have your doctor send it to Well, me. and I can also enter it through my chart. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could just like copy and paste it into because through my chart I'm running three different deals right now mm-hmm. I'm going through OHSU mm-hmm. and then our hospital and then fucking yeah. St. Luke's over in Boise <coughs> yeah that's how I am too and it's like why can't it just be one solid profile that right. all of them can view because they don't use the same um, systems right and it's like yeah. and it's so weird that I mean I get for safety wise but like it's so weird that you have to fill out forms for new hospitals to be yeah. able to look at your information and it's like really just can't you just send it over to them yeah it's all so strict now because like, people have abused the system right all sorts of shit it was funny when I picked up my very first testosterone like actual uh, script because it was paper yeah. It was a paper script. Uh-huh. And I'd never gotten a paper wow. script before because nobody does that. So I had to carry it with me. <laughs> and I was just like, do not drop. Right. <laughs> do not lose it. And it was just so weird because I went up and I was really good friends with one of the girls that worked back in the pharmacy at Safeway. Yeah. And she was like, oh, hey, you know, like, because she would, every time she saw me in line, she'd come over and be like, oh, what's up? You know, what are you doing? You know, because yeah. like, a lot of the time when people go, a new medication means, like, a new ailment, usually. Mm. And I, like, showed her my script, and she looked at it all weird, and then she was like, oh, holy fuck, awesome, you know? Like, yeah. So that was that was weird. But now now he does electronic right. stuff. I, I know there's, like, one doctor in town here that still does paper scripts. Like, my grandfather <laughs> went to him, and I was like, what the hell? And I was like, I have to take this into Red Cross and give this to him. That's crazy. Like, never in my life have I ever been given a paper script. Right. Other and thankfully, than that time. it's like thankfully I knew how to do it. It's like I just walk in like here. Yeah. And but it's crazy. Like yeah, because normally they're like, okay, it'll be at your pharmacy, and they. I was in shock when he handed it to me. I was like, what? right. I was like, what do I do with this? And he goes, that's your script. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, but. Uh, me going on estrogen and stuff is very nervous for me. Like, I'm going to be nervous going through new changes yeah. that my body isn't mm-hmm. used to. Yeah, I, I mean, was pretty nervous for it too because you don't know what to expect. Right. It's different for everybody. Yeah, and I know yours is like, you guys uh, don't have like really prominent changes right. other than like beard yeah. and... Um, like your voice yeah your voice but um but like your hot flashes get worse like even doing testosterone oh really wow and and like after my first dose i had to poke myself in front of the doctor so my actual first dose i did in walla walla oh okay but i got the worst migraine oh i bet every time i took my shot for like three months until my body got used to yeah and I'm just, like, nervous about it because, uh, you know, I've never, obviously, mm-hmm. developed breasts before, so that'll right. be definitely That's different gonna for me. That's going to be a fun, fun time. <laughs> I'm going to have to, like, I mean, I know I told you I'm not a stomach sleeper, but even sleeping on my side, I'm sure I'll have to yeah. adjust myself yeah. because I'll be like, okay, now. Well, and then you're going to have to get used to, like, if you get big enough, it causes back pain. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. thankfully, recently, just... Or even just, like trying to run right and with that oh you know, yeah yep. addition yeah and thankfully recently it, w- it was totally by accident i learned a cool secret on how to pop your back with uh boobs oh yeah and i was like oh i would never thought of that like <laughs> and so i was like okay like that makes sense and uh so i was just like 
that's useful information, even though it wasn't, this video is not meant to be mm -hmm. <laughs> useful, but that really actually helps yeah. me. <laughs> and so I was like, I'll note that in my mind for when I do have boobs. And I'm not sure how it'll work, but I know that <laughs> my mom and my sister um, have prominently big boobs. Right. So, I, I mean, it runs in the family, so I'm not sure if mine right. will yeah. be... I don't know, yeah. Big. And people have told me, because I told people, I was like, well, once I get... Because uh, I used to have this plan before I wanted to go on hormones. Mm -hmm. I was just going to go get breast augmentation. Mm -hmm. And people were like, well, I would go with hormones first so you can actually see what size they are because, who knows, your hormones might make you huge. Right. And then with breast augmentation, you might be bigger than you want to be. That's interesting. Because I, I don't know about that whole other spectrum of it, you know. Right. And I was just like, oh, I was like, I, yeah, I, like, I don't want to be a fucking E-cup out here. <laughs> yeah. People just staring at me like, Jesus. <laughs> is that, is that Valerie? Is that Valerie? <laughs> then like, people are going to think you're right. packing. Right. They're going to be like, oh, that's fucking fake. Yeah, those are fake. Or they're going to think you got plastic surgery. And I know there are still going to be some people who are going to be like, oh, yeah, those are definitely fake. You're going to have to be like, do you want me to flash you? Right. <laughs> right. You know, shit. And like I said, it's going to be so weird if I, like, go swimming or something and totally forget. Oh, yeah. And you and just walk like, out. Oh, like, and that people, like, freak out. Like, I am so sorry. You can just be like, I come from a country where there is no shame. Where there is no shit. <laughs> just, just have like an accent. Yeah. And you just try to, yeah, act like and you're my not from here. This is totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> it is a sign of respect. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That'd be terrible. <laughs> but funny. yeah, I mean, I saw, uh, it was a YouTube video where a guy, that happened to a guy, he went to... Or I should say, sorry, happened to a woman. Uh -huh. She went to a public pool and this lifeguard comes waving her down like, man, you have to wear a top. And she said, it was at that point I really realized that I am passing. Because yeah. like she didn't, because you know, when you look at yourself every day in the mirror, you think, oh, you see the same. Right. But other people see your changes yeah. and she hadn't like really seen her changes until somebody verified it for her well yeah it was it was kind of like that for me because like i didn't even realize that i had like prominent changes until people acted like they didn't know me in public mm -hmm. and i was like it's me sam and they were like no i don't fucking know you and i was like you know me from like such and such place and they were like oh fuck that's you and i was like <laughs> yeah yeah right because <laughs> i feel like a lot of people like Especially from our Walmart days, like I think, like the only people that I even get recognized by are Drew and Dustin. Right. Yeah. And yeah, and like people from those days, like like I even moved into the same apartment complex as Anthony, and he didn't even know it was me. Weird. Yeah. That's that's fucking wild. <laughs> that's wild that he didn't know it was yeah. you. I'm pretty sure. You know. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That's hilarious. I did want to ask you your opinion on, on the uh, LGBT corporate bullshit, is what I call it. I'm not hating on the LGBT, I'm hating on the corporate companies mm -hmm. that um, changed their logos during Pride Month. Oh, did they? I know there's a lot of companies that do that during Pride Month, and I wonder how many of them are actually like genuine supporters of the LGBT. And how many are just trying to get you to shop there? Right, are yeah. doing it as a marketing technique right, to exactly. really... Like, oh, this company's accepting. Let's buy from them. Right. And it's like... And what are they doing with their extra money? Right. Are they, like, sending it over to, like... Places like the Trevor Project yeah. or... Or if they're sending it to, like, the West Bureau Baptist Church or... Right. You know. Or if they're just, you know, taking in the extra revenue for themselves. Yeah. Well, and I know, like, they're, like, Chick-fil-A, they send money to, like, anti-LGBT corporations people who like you know they do conversion therapy and shit oh yeah 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 so Chick -fil -A, like yeah, definitely are not. they like following in chick-fil-a's footsteps while they're like putting on this face or are they right. actually helping the lgbt mm -hmm. community or what i know that was big news uh like a month or so ago where 
Chick-fil-A had its first <clears throat> transgender employee, which was mind-blowing to me why a transgender person would even... Work for them, yeah. And I mean, I guess if you've got nowhere else to work, I mean, but like, they made big headline news and it's like, how does Chick-fil-A feel about that? Right, like, yeah. And you My know, question is, how long ha- are they still working there? How long? Right. You know. And I wonder, you know, it's kind of like Chick-fil-A as a corporation does all this shit, but I wonder how many of the employees are actually, like, totally accepting and, like... Oh, yeah, there are probably some cool-ass fucking people, but yeah. it's the, you know, the big corporate, yeah. you know, money makers who make all the decisions yeah, for the Yeah, it's like, company. oh, we don't support all this, like... Right. And it's like, I mean, I get it, but, like, the fact that they're not open on Sundays either, it's like, you're missing out on a great opportunities like Sundays are busy for oh yeah places. people get out of church and they don't want to go home and cook no they want to go grab something or right. sit in somewhere exactly because I mean me and my grandmother were always the same when we got out of church she's like where do you want to go to lunch yeah. and I'm like well and you know you've got plenty of employees that don't go to church you yeah can let the employees who go to church off yeah and they can work later or not at all and you've got so many people who actually just, you know, they're Christian, but they don't go to church. Right. Or they're or, not Christian. Yeah, and they don't go to church. You know? That's how Safeway was, because they would, you know, give all the people who want to go to church, they'd give them Sunday off. Yeah. And then they'd pay you a little extra just to work on Sunday. Yeah, that's 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 good to do that. <clears throat> yeah. Because I think um, having freedoms in that aspect are good. And allowing the people to get extra hours that don't have those beliefs is yeah. a good the uh, yeah. corporate technique too. Yep. Hey guys, that includes this episode of the podcast. Tune in on Thursday to catch part two with Sam. I have over two hours of podcast footage I have to edit. So there's going to be at least the three parts of the podcast. So you are not going to want to miss it. So tune in next time to the podcast to where you can hear me and Sam talk about the nitty gritty and the tea that we have.